going. Mm -hmm. Lots of news for the week, but we are going to now jump into our feature articles. We had uh, a couple of really good features this yes, week. Yes, we did. And we're going to start with one from uh, from Christine Forcier. And Christine Forcier is is with Intertech, and Christine uh, is is primarily works with Intertech within medical device and cosmetics. Um, right. And her article was breaking into major major, major markets, markets for, for medical, medical device, device manufacturers. manufacturers. Thank yep. you. Now she is Intertech's business assurance program manager for, as I say, for medical and the cosmetic sectors. And now this is a topic that we've been talking about uh, pretty often on the show the last couple of weeks. So we've had a couple of articles that have gotten this, uh, kind of from some different angles. And we're gonna we're gonna bring Christine on. And we're gonna talk about about this and explore those angles and talk about what the process is and, and how uh, registrars like Intertech help to help to manage this. So, exactly. Christine, uh, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Oh, Great. perfect. Thank Excellent. you. Thank you for joining us. We and have Christine here via Skype. Um, and yes, thank you for giving up some of your from your Friday to join us here on Quality Digest Live. Uh, now, Christina, I, I, we, as I mentioned to you earlier, have been talking on the show lately a lot about medical device, but from a slightly different angle than where you bring it from. We've been talking about the, the IEC 60601-1 standard and you talk in your article about and you work in, in your work you work with ISO 13485 can you just kind of so we set the ground a little bit tell us very briefly the difference between those two standards and, and what people need to know about them sure yes um, the IC uh, 6601 uh, standard has to do with product electrical uh, product safety and the ISO 13485 standard uh, relates to um, the quality management system for medical devices. So one addresses product safety and the other one management system. So, and your your perspective on this again is that you take it from the ISO 13485 perspective. You work with, you, you work to help uh, register and audit uh, medical device companies for ISO 13485, and that, that's your, your part of Exactly. This. Gotcha, okay. Well, exactly. let's jump right into this. Now, can, can you give us an example of a product that might be considered a medical device in one market, but not another? This is an interesting question that, that came up. Can you, can you kind of get to that a little bit? Yeah, sure. Um, well, a classic example would be um, a product intended to treat um, signs of aging, um, although definitions in, uh, of a medical device in the EU and in North America look very similar, the interpretation is different uh, or is applied differently. So in the EU, because aging is not a disease or a medical condition, uh, they would not consider it a medical device. Um, in, in the US or Canada, these, these may be regulated as uh, medical devices. And the same product would be regulated as a cosmetic uh, product in the EU. Well, that's, that, that brings up a good point. We, we talk about kind of classification of devices, and, and that's a very early, that's a very upstream uh, element of this. It's actually, I think the first step is really the classification. Can you, can you talk about why that needs to be done so early and, and why maybe it, it can't be done later in the process? Yeah, that's a good question. Actually, uh, because major markets have adopted a risk-based regulatory system, uh, whereby the level of scrutiny exercised by the regulator is proportionate, proportional to the risk level of that product. Um, you know, that's why it's important to classify uh, the device early on in the process because uh, the higher the risk, the more information is required to uh, demonstrate safety and effectiveness. So in other words, the risk class really determines uh, the requirements. Everything flows from that. So that's how you get the conformity assessment requirements imposed on you as a manufacturer. And what are some what are some common errors that somebody would make in, in terms of classifying or thinking that they're classifying their, their device? What are some, some common hiccups that, that device manufacturers encounter out there that you've seen? Uh, the most common one I see is that, that uh, manufacturers often assume the classification in the U.S. applies elsewhere. So. And, you know, they may have a product classification by the FDA and, and they, they talk about having a class 2 device when, you know, class 2 doesn't even exist in the EU system. They have a class 2A and 2B. So that's when we know that the manufacturer hasn't looked at uh, the classification rules and, and hasn't determined the classification for that specific market. So this has to be done. The exercise has to be done for every market. Every regulator has a different set of rules. Um, you, you can't just assume equivalence. 
and what's the risk? We, we talk about risk all the time. What's the risk of that from the perspective not only of the manufacturer, but in terms of the user as well, in, in terms of not properly classifying it? Is it, is it more of a financial risk, or, or is it a risk that is uh, in terms of maybe something escaping into the market that shouldn't be? The risk is more uh, for the manufacturer to, to experience delays in getting the approval, because if you know, it means that if it's the wrong classification, they, they're going down the wrong path, so they may not be producing the, you know, documentation that's required, and, you know, there may be more back and forth than if they start with the right classification and understand early on what's, re that what's going to be required of them. Uh, there was a, a really interesting chart that you had in your in your article, uh, and, and I encourage everyone out there to read to read Christine's article, which uh, again appeared earlier this week in Quality Digest. Christine Forcey's article on medical device standards. Uh, the the benefits of using the five steps that were in that chart uh, in, in terms of major market requirements and, and looking at them in parallel. What what are the benefits of doing that? The main, the main, sorry, the main benefit is to save time and avoid delays down the road. For example, uh, when a manufacturer prepares a technical file, it's easy to address, um, for example, safety and effectiveness requirements in Canada, EU, um, Japan at the same time because they overlap. Mm -hmm. So if you uh, develop that technical file, for example, just addressing one market, then later on you have to go back and revise a technical file when, uh, you know, it's much simpler to, to to look at those in parallel and create a technical file that will address all, all market requirements. And, and the same applies when developing a quality management system. So again, it's more efficient to develop a process that, uh, that will address all um, applicable requirements, you know, uh, at the same time than trying to add on later. Now, Christine, we, as I referenced at the beginning of, of our, our interview with you here, we, we've had a lot of chatter. We, we've been covering this issue a lot in, in Quality Digest, uh, in, in our newsletter, as well as us here on the show. Uh, this idea of, of medical device requirements, standards, again, more through the prism of 60601-1, but I think it's applicable to 13485 as well, that you know, there's a significant cost factor involved here, and, and not only the cost of developing medical devices, but at the end of that game where you develop it and then you have to go through the process of, of ensuring that it's compliant and that it meets a standard like whether it be 13485 or, or 60601-1. So, the, you know, there's, there's questions about the, 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 the cost benefit structure of that. So how, how would you address questions w which we've gotten about the, the cost that it, that, that it takes to, to have a registrar certify you, could, make sure that you're in compliance with, with one of these standards? Well, the cost, it really depends. It, it's a case by case. It really, uh, for, for certification, um, it depends on the size of the company, but also complexity, uh, risk of the products, um, how many processes there are. So there are many factors that we consider. Uh, there's, a, there's a mandate table that's imposed on registrars. Uh, so that, that's really the starting point. Um, and that's really what determines uh, cost. But there's also... Um, you know, benefits to, to getting registered. Uh, you get the benefits of having a, an independent party uh, testing your your uh, your system, uh, identifying risk area. So, you know, maybe it's hard to measure the savings mm -hmm. or the, the value, uh, but there is uh, definitely a cost benefit analysis to uh, to be made by manufacturers. Absolutely. Well, great. Well, Christine, thank you. We're going we're to leave it off there, but I, I really appreciate you joining us here today on, on Quality Digest Live, giving us your perspective on, on ISO 13485, a valuable standard. Obviously, something anyone in the medical device field needs to be well aware of. Right. And, uh, and certainly, we, we appreciate your expert insight into that, Christine. And we, we look forward to chatting with you soon and, and hearing more of your thoughts in, in upcoming issues of, of Quality Digest Daily and, and here on our show as well. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Christine.
Well, good All stuff right. there. I, yeah. and I, I think that we, we really get get to the heart of some of these issues that a lot of the readers are addressing. Is is you know why and what what the benefit of it is and and, and why you have to. You know, it's not it's not a choice really in many matters. And, and it, yeah, depends depending on your market. There are sometimes you 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 don't really have a choice as to whether you're registered. If you want to go into certain markets, uh, you actually have no choice. Well, and, so. and there's there is. I, I think she made a good point of this. There's a significant benefit to that 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 expert third party analysis of of that and and making sure that your device meets those standards because we know, I mean, quality escape in this in this sector is is not only potentially harmful obviously to thousands and thousands of, of, of health consumers, but also financially the burden could be uh, well into the millions. Right, and I, I, think, I, I think an issue that we do need to delve into more, more deeply, uh, probably doesn't apply to 13485 so much as some of the other medical device mm -hmm. managers, is the cost. Yes. And I think that is something that we want to pursue yeah, a little bit we, further we will. in we'll, the future. We'll be yeah. doing more of it down the line, so yeah, it's great. Okay. <laughs>